Hi, and welcome to the Expired Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. The Expired Podcast is brought to you by Macy Bookout and Natalie Gard. Macy is dealing with some sick kiddos, so thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to do this one solo. Let's get into it. The Kingston Courthouse Murders. Okay, let's get into it. Jennifer had a very difficult upbringing. Her first ever memory was in the courthouse as her mom and dad divorced. This is at the Emory County, Utah Courthouse. And Jennifer and her sister were put through a a pretty difficult uh, custody battle. And... If you've ever been through a custody battle, you know how that is. Her father quickly remarried and his two daughters were not present for the marriage, which ultimately caused friction. There isn't a lot of a lot of information about Jennifer's early life, but she did describe her life in a manifest manifesto manifest um once she got into jail she was writing and she was able to give her account of everything after her parents divorced and her father remarried jennifer says She and her sister were sexually abused by someone in her father's new family, which went on for several years. They never told anyone. Jennifer found solace in horses. Her aunt owned several horse stables, and that's where Jennifer kind of fell in love with horses. She fell in love with a thoroughbred horse named Weaver, but unfortunately, she only got to heal with Weaver for a short time because he moved to a new stable. She says, well, that's it. I backed away from horses for good. That's sad. At 15, her attention turned to alcohol, drugs, and dating older men. Her boyfriend was 25 and she was only 15 years old. She was a 15-year-old child dating a 25-year-old. While staying between her mom and her dad, she learned, you know, different skills like how to sneak out and how to cover her tracks when she snuck out. She was able to sneak out of her mom's house and take her mom's car. And she even learned how to, like, change back the odometer so the odometer is the the thing that shows the miles that (laughs) Jennifer learned how to rewind the the miles on her mom's car the summer before her senior year in Utah she met her first husband she wrote a day before the wedding at three months pregnant and 18 years old She had found him with another woman. She went on with the wedding and would later welcome three children, two sons, and a daughter with her husband. Jennifer says that the marriage was abusive and at times there were drugs in in the household. So, sad. Sad, sad, sad. In 1996... Jennifer remembers her first taste of cocaine. She says, I was hooked. She also writes that she tried it once. And ever since then, she was completely on it. She described being sold off by her husband and for her husband when they didn't have any money to support their habit. She then went on to have a six-month bender, and the only thing that stopped her was when she came home one night and was, and 
she had her three kids, her husband, she came home one night after being strung out on cocaine and none of her kids recognized her. By 1999, Jennifer's husband was arrested twice for drug charges, including a meth lab in the couple's three bedroom home and a DUI in the fourth degree, all within two weeks. This all happened within a two week span. With her husband going away, she felt lost. She says, I felt no self-esteem, no character or no substance. She moved on with her life. She moved on to her second husband who was very nice, but a, a bit of a pushover. They quickly married and Jennifer says 30 minutes after they said, I do. She met a friend of the groom at the reception. His name was Travis. She was smitten right away. She, yeah, she liked Travis. Um, she and Travis would begin an intensive affair, sneaking off to casino vacations and all, all kinds of things. Even after Jennifer's second husband found out about the affair, um, he was just like, you know, let's end it. Let, can we end this? And Jennifer wasn't having it. Um, that quickly fizzled out and Travis and Jennifer were kind of over because Travis was like, he was a kid himself. He could not handle Jennifer and her kids, which is understandable. After that, Jennifer needed a vacation. So she decided to visit her friend, Tina, in good old Music City, Tennessee, which is Nashville. She fell in love with Tennessee and eventually she was like, okay, this is it. This is where I want to move. I want to bring my three kids here. So that's kind of what she did. In 2001, she and her three children packed up and moved to Big Sandy, which is west of Nashville, near Land Between the Lakes. And if that sounds familiar, Land Between the Wit. Land Between the Lakes, you should check out our episode on Carla Atkins and Vicki Stout. Catch up, because it's a good one. In 2004, she started a job at the Northwest Correctional Complex in Tiptonville, Tennessee. That's where she would meet her third husband. Her third husband was an inmate. <laughs> at the jail. His name was George Hyatt. George was a seasoned prisoner. At 17, he had already been through drug and alcohol uh, counseling. He escaped between two and five times, including once when George and another inmate used a knife from a toothbrush they made to escape. Jennifer was caught giving George extra food and special attention. That's when she was fired. That didn't stop Jennifer and George. She would petition for a marriage with George, which happened on May 20th, 2009. The couple were no contact due to George's inmate status, so only letters and folk phone calls. They weren't able to kiss at their marriage or touch or anything like that. The couple's relationship was tough. Jennifer would even try to take her life less than two months after they wed. They tried to stick it out and make it work. They were looking forward to a 2005 court hearing for George in uh, a, a robbery case. He was supposed to plead guilty, but the couple came up with a plan to escape. By August 9, 2005, 
George was supposed to be transferred to the Kingston County Courthouse, where the escape plan would then take place. Jennifer drove her blue Ford Explorer to the courthouse around 10 a.m. on August 9th, 2005, and George pled guilty to the robbery. She approached the inmates and began trying to assess the scene. Um, the inmates were being escorted by Officer Wayne Cotton Morgan and Officer Larry Porky Harris. She then fatally shot Cotton, which was Officer Wayne Cotton Morgan, three times. And she also shot Officer Larry Porky Harris as well. The inmates that were in their custody ran and loaded up in Jennifer's car. Jennifer was shot during the encounter and later recalls using painkillers to deal with her gunshot wound. Witnesses claim that Jennifer Hyatt stormed out of the courthouse where she got into her Ford Explorer, which was later found abandoned. Police later announced that they believed she was dri driving a Chevrolet Venture with the license plate number GFU-155. Two days later, on August 10th, the Chevrolet was found in a parking lot of a like hotel room, Echno Lodge in Erlanger, Kentucky, but neither Jennifer or any of the inmates were found. The same night, the Hyatts were charged with a first-degree murder because Cotton had died. On August 10th, 2005, around 10 p.m., Jennifer and George were captured and they were featured on America's Most Wanted. And they were featured. Jennifer and George were captured at America's Best Value Inn in Columbus, Ohio. The couple was captured after a cab driver named Mike Waggers drove from Erlinger, Kentucky to this hotel in Ohio. The Hyatts reportedly said that they were attending an Amway convention and Wagger later called the police and SWAT team, um, from the Columbus Police Department and they were able to capture them. It was reported that the weapons, it was reported that weapons were found at the hotel room. On September 17th, 2007, Jennifer Hyatt pleaded guilty to first degree murder and was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. As a condition of the plea bargain against, as a condition of the plea bargain, which allowed her to avoid the death penalty, she agreed to testify against Joy, George Hyatt. However, her testimony was not required because subsequently, George Hyatt did not content, contest to the charges made against him. On March 9th, 2009, he pled guilty, including the first degree murder of guard Wayne Cotton Morgan. As a result, George Hyatt was sentenced to the imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Now, Jennifer was also put into that same category so she was put into life without the possibility of parole. <sighs> this is a hard one. I don't know what Jennifer was thinking. It seemed like she had a pretty normal, normal-ish upbringing. 
But at the same time, it, it seemed like, you know, she had a lot going on too. And she had, you know, she had demons and she had, you know, people who weren't on her side. I think mental health has a lot to do with serial killers. I think mental health has a lot to do with people who kill. So what do you think about the Kingston courthouse murders? Do you think it was, you know, manipulation? Do you think it was, uh, like, raw love? What do you think happened with the Kingston courthouse murders? The Kingston courthouse murders. Mm. Let us know at Expired Podcast, at Expired Podcast 423, at Expired Podcast Chat, C H A T T. Let us know what you think about this episode. And of course, we're going to come out with episodes every single Monday, wherever you download podcasts. We appreciate you. Please like, rate, and review all of our episodes and let us know what we did good and let us know what we could improve on. Let's think of the, um, the closing. Macy always says, If you're going to be an asshole, be a funny one. <laughs> I'm always saying, don't do meth. And she says, take care of each other. Take care of each other. We love you. Thanks so much for listening to the expired podcast. <laughs>